Hello everyone. Christmas has come early. I've been sent a box. Shall we? My first ever unboxing, the first time that anybody sent me anything for me to have a look at. Bubble wrap. Yeah, I better, I better put that to one side otherwise we could be here for hours while I pop that lot. Now inside here is the Go 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 Sport V Pro Laser Rangefinder. Now you may not have heard of that brand, but they've been going in America for some time. They produce rangefinders for hunting, and now they're getting into golf. They have two models, one is all black, and takes that little short stubby battery. But I wanted to try this one. This is the one I chose. This is the white one. It takes two triple A's, and you can buy those anywhere. So I thought that's handy. Got a nice hard case. Standard these days with rangefinders. And inside here, is the white one. Now as I say, it takes two triple A's in an underslung compartment and they've asked me for feedback. So the first thing I'm going to feed back to them is there is no O-ring on this. And in fact, it says in there, uh, in the user manual there, that this is not fully waterproof because of that. So that's the first thought. It's got a very large magnet on this, so I should be testing that out on the course. And it's got this wonderful shape here. It's kind of like shaped like the stock of a rifle really, and it's, it fits very, very nicely in your hand. This is why I wanted to test this one rather than the black one because the black one is, um, well, it doesn't have that. It has three modes on it. Mode one is you press the button and it starts firing numbers at you. So if you've got trees beyond the flag, it's going to start picking up the flag and the trees and you take the lower number. In mode two, it's a flag hunting. So in mode two, which is fairly normal, the sort of thing that we would use for on a range finder, then that gets right in on the flag and it fires back one number. Instead of it firing two or three different numbers at you, it fires just the one number. It's got a slope function on the side, which is always handy for going uphill and downhill. And in mode three, which must be something to do with the software on the chip from the, uh, the hunting application, it will actually tell you how fast something is moving. So if we see a few seniors, we could point this at some seniors and see, if, uh, see how fast they're going. You get a wrist strap. Nice little packet of a, of a lens cleaner, always very handy. And of course, the user manual. It's in a number of different languages, as it's fairly standard, but as I'm a bloke, chances of me actually reading this are rather slim. Well, the rain stopped, so um, let's go to the course and uh, give this a full test and then I'll give you a rather blunt and honest opinion afterwards. Now I got an email with the prices of this on Amazon and I've forgotten what the price is. What I can tell you is it's under a hundred pounds and if you opt for the non-slope version it's cheaper again and the company have said that they're going to give me an Amazon code for you to use should you choose to buy this through my channel. Now I haven't got that code yet because it takes some time to uh, 
to actually set up. But as soon as that code arrives, I'll bang it on this video and you'll be able to see exactly how much it's going to cost you. Let's go to the course. Well, we finally made it out on the course. The rain has stopped. God, it's been a long time, hasn't it? So we are here today to test this. The Go 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 Sport V Pro Laser Rangefinder. So I'm going to give it some serious tests today. We're going to pick some flags which are very awkward to pick up and we'll see how well it does. And we'll compare it to what I've already got hanging off the bag. Now the first test I was going to do with it was to test the strength of this magnet simply by sticking it on the side of my trolley. But of course my trolley is aluminium so it doesn't stick to anything. So we'll find some coarse furniture around the golf course that's made of steel and we'll stick it to it. Worst comes to the worst, we get back to the clubhouse, we go and find one of the uh, golf carts and we stick it to the, uh, the upright rail on, one of the, on the golf cart. Now I've played eight holes in four weeks so what I'm going to hit today probably isn't going to be very pretty but it's not about me playing golf, it's all about this. Tell you what, after the layoff I've had, that's a pretty decent shot. I'll take it. Right, first test here on the ninth, down the hill to a green that's below us. The flag isn't above the horizon. It tends to be a bit of a dark corner. So sometimes that can test one of these things in picking it up. Got 195 middle, flags way at the back. Let's see what we get. So I'm going to test this laser with all of the worst case scenarios, which probably isn't very fair. And what you see is I'm giving this two or three goes just to get the yardage and then double check that I've got it right. Because my hands aren't exactly that steady. It took me a little while to log onto that flag, but it's saying 203. And I, th I think that's about right. Gonna have to hit a hybrid so far back. Well, you can tell I haven't played for a while. Well, back in the old days, before we had measuring equipment like watches and lasers, I used to just find the 100 markers, the 150 markers, and walk, pace it out, then look at the green and estimate where the flag was. Because that's problematic, that relies on the markers being in the right place. I've just gone and stood on the 100 yard marker over there in the middle of the fairway, the little red button, my watch said 103. With a three-tiered green like this, where you really do have to be accurate, having something like this is a bloody good idea. I'm chasing the greenkeeper, so I'm just waiting for him to finish cutting and put the flag back in, and then we'll, we'll give it a go. The watch says 108 middle. And it looks to be around about the middle. Actually, it's just gone back in. Hundred and ten point six yards playing a hundred and fourteen. My wedge isn't going to get up there, and yet the hundred yard marker is barely over there. If I take my wedge, I would not be getting anywhere near this flag. It's a 9-iron. Nine so on a shorter one, I've given it one jab of the button and I come back with the yardage straight away. So that shows that from a long way out, I struggle 
to hold these damn things steady. Well, I'm not too sure how to test a laser, to be honest, other than to point it at a flag and tell you what it says on the on the reading in the in the lens there. But often on YouTube, you see somebody testing a budget one against you know that expensive brand leader that none of us can really afford especially with the import taxes in the UK so I'm going to test this budget one against my existing budget one where's the bloody flag Yeah, the, the, the flag is hard on the left behind the willow. You can't even see the flag from here. Hang on a mo. So yes, believe it or not, lasers do not work through willow trees. Now what I'm going to do here is give two goes to each laser. Pick up the flag, get the yardage, then give it a second go just to double check and then switch lasers and do it again. So on these shorter ones, I have no trouble at all. It's only on the long ones that I struggle. Sorry about that, I didn't know where the damn flag was. So this came up with 136, this came up with 134. Perversely the watch is saying it's 141 to the middle. I can't tell from here whether it's middle or not. So take your pick. One thing I will say about these, you know, laser technology has been around for decades. You know, we've been measuring the surface of the moon from here for decades. So one's probably got software where it rounds up and one's got software where it rounds down because it is not an exact yardage to that flag. It's going to be so many yards and so many inches. It's a one in 36 chance that it's going to be to the exact yard I'll tell you what, I'll take the average. It's going to be 135. I'll tell you what, I did not want anything to do with that smelly flag down the left there. Well this is a test, we're up the hill, the flag is not on the skyline, we need to see what the, uh, how far it is and how far it's playing. One sixty playing one seventy six and it picked it up first time. Now when I was down here on the ninth at about two hundred yards out. I'm not very good with these, when I'm holding it to my face, it's kind of like doing this a bit. So even with my own rangefinder and with my mate's top of the range rangefinder, from 200 yards, I still struggle with these things. Might be something to do with the glasses and me uh, wobbling it all over the place. Well, I was quite impressed that the laser picked up this flag with the hill behind it first go. No complaints about that. Just short. I forgot the wind. Right then. I hope this isn't too dark because I got the light behind me but there's there's nothing I can do about the weather. So the last one is another par 3. It's 198 yards. I'll tell you now with my own rangefinder it can take me two or three goes to pick up the flag because I'm a little bit shaky. So uh, let's see how quick this is. Two or three goes to beat. So again, pick up the flag, get the yardage, give it a second stab just to double check the yardage. Got it on the third go, 201. But that's not the tool. That's the guy holding it. I'll tell you what, I'll get on this, um, there's a waste bin here. See if I can hold it steady, see if it will pick it up a lot quicker. 
So when I finally get my eye behind the lens and I'm holding it steady, it takes one go to pick up the flag. First go. What can I say? It's the Muppet holding it. Now when I'm about 150, 160, I'm not having issues. But out here at 200, then uh, I'm afraid it's all this. Perhaps I haven't had enough caffeine this morning. When we get to the green, I'll do, uh, I'll do an assessment. And I need to find something metal to stick this magnet on. Right. The final test. I said I'd find a piece of metal for you somewhere. A bit of steel rather than the aluminium of my trolley. Here it is. It's the life belt. That's a good magnet. That started pulling from about an inch and a half out and it was a very, very solid connection and a good tug to get it off. I think if you put this on the side of a golf cart, then you would have no problems with it. It's not going to fall off. You're not going to get down the fairway and find that it's missing and you've got to drive back 250 yards to find it. Right, we're back. So quick conclusion and I'll make it brief. Fits nice in the hand feels nice, good materials. From 165, 170 yards and closer, I got no problem picking up the flag. 200 yards, I struggle. But then I struggle with my own. And I struggle with my mate's top of the range one too. Simply, I'm too shaky to be picking up something that's the thickness of my thumb. So when you see me standing there, I might be getting the correct number and because I know that I'm shaky I'm having a second go to double check that I have got the correct number. So it looks like I'm taking a long time because of the laser but I'm not. I'm taking a long time because you know I can't hold it well enough. How does it compare to other lasers? Well having watched other YouTube videos where guys are testing them I'd say it um, it's very comparable to the other budget lasers which are either side of a hundred pounds. You know, the, the plain one without the slope is under a hundred, the one with the slope is about the same amount, over a hundred. So yeah, it compares very well with budget ones. Would I buy it compared to say spending a little more money? Probably not. I'd probably spend a little more money. I'd certainly want one with a battery compartment that's got a rubber o-ring. Now mine has, but because this is England and it rains a fair bit, when it rains I put it away. I put it in the bag out of the way. I don't want to take the chance of, of it getting wet internally even though mine's waterproof. So if I was on a really tight budget and I was desperate for one, yes, I'd probably buy the Go 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 Sport because it's really quite nice. But if I wasn't on a budget, I'd probably spend more. And I think you'll find that in all of the laser comparison videos that us being golfers, we always go for the more expensive one. But for the money, yeah. It, it's pretty decent for the money. You just need a little patience at 200 yards. But that could be just me. Anyway, thanks for watching. Cheerio.